<laughs> All right, let's dig in. Thanksgiving, expressing gratitude as we remember all that we have. And uh, last week I introduced you to this uh, book called First Nations Version or Translation of the Bible. And I've been peeking through a lot this week and there is, it is so refreshing to see a fresh translation, just like the mirror translation, which is more of a devotional commentary in the translation. But this is more of a translation. Um, it's going to stretch you. <laughs> you know, instead of using the word God, they're using the word creator. Well, that's awkward for some of us that have been church for like ever. <laughs> but it's beautiful. We need to expand our lens and our understanding of how others see God. You know, the Western church does not have the whole, you know, ownership of how God is perceived. In fact, we probably messed it up. So what I want to do is I want to read by way of start of our Thanksgiving from this translation from 1 Corinthians, the way of love. And I think you all know this one, love is patient, love is kind. Um, now hear it through a more contemplative lens, and I think it'll, it'll hit home. I may have the gift of speaking in both the languages of human beings and of spirit messengers. But if I fail to love, my words become like the screech of a cat <laughs> or the yelping of a wild dog. Clicker. I'm kind, sir. There we go. I may have prophetic powers and the ability to see into sacred mysteries and understand all things. I might even have faith strong enough to make mountains move, but if I fail to love, I am nothing. I may give all my possessions to the poor and give my body to be burned as a sacrifice, but if I fail to love, I've gained no honor. Love is patient and kind. Love is never jealous. It does not brag or boast. It is not puffed up or big-headed. Love does not act in shameful ways, nor does it care only about itself. Ouch. It is not hot-headed, nor does it keep track of wrongs done to it. Love is not happy with lies and injustice, but truth makes its heart glad. Love keeps walking, even when carrying a heavy load. Love keeps trusting, never loses hope, and stands firm in hard times. The road of love has no end. The time will come when prophets are no longer needed, when people will stop speaking in unknown languages, and when the need for knowledge will fade away. For we only know some of the story, and can only prophesy small parts of it. But the time is coming when we will know the whole story from the beginning to the end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, and I saw through the eyes of a child. But when I became fully grown, I put my childish ways behind me. For now, it is as if we are looking at a poor reflection in muddy water. But then... We will see face to face. For now, my knowledge is full of holes. <laughs> but when the time comes, I will know the great spirit as well as I am known by him. Ooh, let me say that again. I will know the great spirit as well as I am known by him. <sighs> That's deep right there. But until then, these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. And love is the greatest that text of love is patient, love is kind, it's a biggie. You say you love someone? <laughs> well, we just had a phenomenal definition of what love is. And the danger for us is to, while we may receive some of that truth ourselves and say yes, uh, love is patient, love is kind, and we can go through that list, we can say, okay, I can see where I gotta do some changes, but I know the other person sure has some of those things to really correct too. Anybody sneak that thought in? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Don't do that. Do not port that on someone else. It's, you're, you don't have any business doing that at all. 
Because that's another judgment of shame. Trying to correct somebody else's behavior, attitudes, by pointing out their flaws. Listen, the Holy Spirit's really good at pointing out places we need to heal. And does ever so gently and is not in the shaming business. That's a lesson to learn. Take that to heart for you personally. I, I will and am. How'd you like that translation? Was that kind of cool? It was just a bit different. It was a nice... It, the more we read it from different translations, something different's going to click each time. And we're going to continue to grow in our, in our understanding of God's love for us. And I love that one line. Um, I will know the great spirit as well as I am known by him. If only we caught that. If we could see ourselves as God sees us. Oh, oh, we'd be not so hard on ourselves. Let's dig into some good, good news. All right. So, this message is about attitude. (laughs) You have an attitude, yes, but what kind? Everybody's got an attitude. (laughs) Just, what is it? So, it's also about our default pattern of thinking, this Thanksgiving theme. It's also about our go-to response. How do we respond to things in life? Do we respond, and again, reading that love is patient, love is kind text, (laughs) that might be a good self-evaluation of our pattern of responses. I know one individual who um, had a default of snapping all the time, constantly angry, always blowing their top in anger and and verbal, like shout loud, scream. And uh, I've watched God do a, a heart change. And the pattern isn't of snapping anymore. And God's done that change in that person in a beautiful way. Do they lose their temper once in a while? Probably. But it's no longer the known pattern. So what are you and I known for? What are the patterns people would say about us? For anybody that you love and trust, and if you were to ask them, hey, what, what do you see? And that requires vulnerability and safety. So we're thinking of, but this whole idea of Thanksgiving, how can we change our attitude? What's our default pattern of thinking and our go-to response? So let's find a way to fix some of our thinking patterns or our response patterns and see how slight adjustments can make a big difference. And this has to do with our approach to what Scripture says about being thankful. I am shocked at how many times through all the New Testament we're encouraged to be grateful, to be thankful. It, it's incredible. In 2 Corinthians uh, 9.15, from the Passion Translation, it says, Praise God for his astonishing gift, which is far too great for words. And then in the First Nations version, it says, Give thanks to the Great Spirit for the gift that goes beyond our weak ways of speaking. (laughs) Wow. This is just the beginning, but we're going to dive into the Old Testament now. There's a lot in the Old Testament. We'll do New Testament next week. But there's a lot in the Old Testament that reflects even in the New. Like, yes, we look at the New Testament differently than we do the Old. But there's still glimpses, rays of light, of truth shining in the Old Testament of God's goodness and the advice given to us. Psalm 118.24 says, This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And this is a great wake-up call to us uh, each morning, even before you have your first coffee. You know, let's rejoice in the Lord. Some of you, no, let me have my coffee first, then I'll rejoice. But anyway, that depends on what your personality type is like. Uh, but the idea is to recognize daily this day is a gift. Every day is a gift. And we need to remember the source. It's too easy to wake up in the morning and think of all the things you got to do and the problems you're going to face, and suddenly you're pulled in all these directions of all the complaints and struggles from the previous day. How about let's start like this? It's good wisdom. In 1 Chronicles, it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Well, maybe some of us don't believe God is good. So, Maybe we need to rediscover who God really is. 
Maybe God's different than the God of your upbringing, even if you grew up in church, because each church, each denomination around the world, everywhere, shares a lens or perspective of how they see God. And I hope it's not the same as when you were little. It can't be, it better not be. God's love and greatness is way too big to be contained in to one church or denomination or culture. We need to keep growing in our understanding. I love this, his faithful love endures forever. I think there's a psalm that begins with, uh, God is good, his faithful love endures forever. He provides all of my needs, his faithful love endures forever. And it's like a whole list of his faithful love endures forever. Do you guys remember that one? Vaguely? Yeah. It's a response of reading. It's, it's like the one who's leading the group or in worship is declaring something. And the response is, his faithful love endures forever. It's like you're telling your mind and your ears, reminding yourself of something that's true. But here in the West, we just zip through it, gloss over it, and go, yes, yeah, faithful love endures forever. Next. What's, what's, the next? what's the next thing? But we don't stop. We don't focus and really think, Wow. His faithful love endures forever. If that's true, that means his faithful love endures through your circumstance, your trial. Absolutely. It's not absent. That's a big one to remember. First Chronicles 16 says, Give thanks to God. He is good and his love never quits. This is from the message translation. Same, same verse. But give thanks to God. He is good and his love never quits. I love that. Having that one word twist, his love never quits. Do you quit? <laughs> yes. We quit. We quit stuff. We quit discussions when we're fed up. We just stop talking, walk away, or whatever, or, or block. <laughs> you know, whatever it takes. We, you know, we're too tired at the end of the day. We quit. Uh, you know, we have our, our quitting time, but not God. God never quits. That's, I know it sounds so basic, But dang, I think we're forgetting some basics in the day-to-day experiences of life. We cannot forget the basics. I love this next one. 1 Chronicles 23. And each morning and evening they stood before the Lord to sing songs of thanks and praise. That's big. Morning and evening they stood before the Lord. Man, we get, we got to go to church today. Uh, maybe not sleep. I was watching online. No, that's not, that's not a stat. It's a joke. But the idea of, they were doing it morning and evening. I have a deep sense of desire, and we have the freedom to do whatever we want. There are no rules. There's no way to, you're not supposed to guilt people into gathering for church. The Bible doesn't tell us to do that. We gather because we want to. It's very different. There's a different freedom here to do that. And I think that's really important. But if we're seeing a pattern from way back when, they stood morning and evening. They assisted with the burnt offerings that that were presented to the Lord on the Sabbath days. At new moon celebrations and all the appointed festivals, the required number of Levites served in the Lord's presence at all times, following all the procedures they had been given. So there's something different here. This This is Old Covenant. And yet their attitude of being thankful, that was still ported onto them to be thankful, even though they were under an old covenant. Because the new covenant made the old one fade away. You don't need the old when you have the new, which is Jesus. Jesus came in to bring us a new covenant, a new new way of relating, because God didn't want to have all that sacrifice stuff. He never did. He said, I never wanted that stuff. Well, that's awkward. Because uh, pe- they just lived through this. We'll have to do a series on what happened, what changed in, historically, and why the sacrifices came to an end and how that happened. It's a, it's a pretty interesting story. But in First Chronicles 29, it says, Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. This is, this is a, an our God. This is recognizing who we call our God. But who is that? Is that... Your definition of God as in the one who's sitting up on a chair, on a throne, way far away, God? Or is it Father, Son, and Holy Ghost living in us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit as one that we're in union with that God? It is that God. God's not distant. They saw God as distant. 
Because that's the way it was played out. You went to the temple, to the place, to be with God. You didn't, you didn't um, uh, see God as with you the whole time. They didn't catch that. That was not the message that was sent in the early uh, way of faith and for the Jewish culture there. 2 Chronicles 33 says, Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings and thanksgiving offerings on it. He also encouraged the people of Judah to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. Now, here's something cool. When, we're doing, when they're doing peace offerings and thanksgiving offerings, they weren't slaughtering animals. This was flour, fruit, you name it, all that stuff that they had. This was a different kind of offering. Look it up. This, it's beautiful. So there's, there's a whole bunch of things they did, a whole bunch of different types of offerings and sacrifices. They were not all that uh, sacrificial lamb that happened once a year. And in fact, if the previous verse, it says they celebrated New Moon and all these festivals. Well, which ones do we have? In our Canadian culture, Western culture, we don't have a lot of ways to remember things like that. It's just not part of what we have done, and yet there's tremendous value in it. Be careful before you make fun of somebody else's culture. We're not, don't judge, because there's tremendous value there, and look for the value of it. Isaiah 12 says, and on that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Make them remember that his name is exalted. Praise the Lord in song, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known throughout the earth. Oh boy, that's a lot. Make his deeds known among the people. How do we do that? Do we do that? I don't think so. Not very well anyway. I think we're scared to share what the God has done because it could sound like boasting. It can, it can, you know, pendulum swing that way. But the heart of sharing what God has done, we need more community time, either in smaller groups, it doesn't have to be done publicly, but to share how God has been good, how you have felt the presence of God or the peace of Christ or been restored from a crisis or I'm in a crisis. I haven't been, re- you know, I've not been renewed from this, this yet. And there's an honesty part to that that's really important. Absolutely. But this is cool. Psalm 50. Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows you have made to the Most High. Now, this is, this is definitely Old Covenant, but the idea of thankfulness being your sacrifice. Well, if I remember correctly, um, we make a lot of effort to celebrate someone else. If it's going to be someone's birthday, we, we plan and we, you know, let's say we're going to have a party. For, remember when the kids were younger, they had big parties and invite all the friends and blah, blah, blah. I remember setting up stuff in the backyard that Lori told me to. But I just did whatever she said. You know, she, as we planned these parties, it was work. It was work to, to have something like this. There's effort involved. In the same way, when they did sacrifices, there was effort put into preparing, getting your things together, going to the temple. There was effort in actually going, bringing, intentionally thinking, getting your head straight in this. And here, the idea of a sacrifice of thanks, you know what? The pattern doesn't change, and we think it does. At least, if we think about it, we realize we're actually not, what's the effort in giving thanks? Do we put any heart, time, effort into it like we do other things? That is the sacrifice of intentionally taking time, putting into words, preparing thanks. How do we do that? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. But I saw that as I read this and I went, oh my goodness. What is our sacrifice? Is it a sacrifice or is it, I just give thanks, say a quick prayer. No. Sometimes it's more contemplation. Maybe it's more internal. Maybe it's more intentional. It will change you. Being thankful physically changes you. Being thankful physically changes your attitude. Emotionally it changes your attitude. And it also has an effect on other people. If you get Mr. Grumpy Pants sitting in the front row and Mr. Joy Boy in the front row, where, do, where are people going to want to sit near? They're not going to want to sit around grumpy pants. They're just, it's just not 
what happens. <laughs> People are drawn to life and light. They're drawn to joy. Why? Because it's what we need. It's what our soul needs. It's, met, it's like a vitamin for the soul we always need. Thanksgiving is also one of those vitamins that we constantly need to put out. Not necessarily take in, but there is a taking in too. And we're wondering why we're struggling in our faith sometimes. Some of the basics of what we're called to do, if there's some doing involved and responding, there is. Thanksgiving, giving thanks. It's hard to focus on being thankful and be mad and angry and frustrated at the world at the same time. I don't think it's possible. Hmm. Interesting. Psalm 50 23 says, but giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. I love this sacrifice. God wants the sacrifice of thanksgiving, not the animals. Jesus made that clear in the New Testament, okay? Next one. Psalm 95. <laughs> I love this. Come. Come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. See, there's room for Pentecostal churches. Anyway, let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him, for the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Again, this is going back and remembering the fundamentals of who God is and who we are and that we are created beings that have now been joined as one with Father, Son, Spirit. Constant reminders. Again, this is, this is just the Old Testament right now. This is good stuff. Psalm 103. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my, what? Wait a minute. Old, old, this is the Old Testament. Old co What? Old covenant? Are you sure it says that? He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases? Oh my goodness, there it is. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. This is Old Covenant. This is a ray of light. Uh, a friend of mine, Richard Murray, was saying, uh, as, he, as he was describing how the writers of the Old Testament, again, just an illustration, of how uh, it, it was incomplete, okay? And so it was almost like a strobe light where you have a d -d 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 -d. every time the light's on, you, see, you can see, but when it's off, you can't. And after a while, your eyes can go, blah, blah, blah. it's really hard. But he, he kind of said the, the revelation of the goodness of God was like a strobe light. And they wrote from their lens. So sometimes they wrote from the light, sometimes they wrote from the dark. Not always correct. This is a light. This is a correct image. This, this, the light was on when this was written. It's beautiful. If it looks like Jesus, then you can believe it. It's beautiful. I remember where it says here, I may never forget the good things he does for me. Uh, I'm thinking back to Nehemiah when he came to help the walls of Jerusalem be built back up and put the gates on. And then he called the people out. And they stood before the leader, who it wasn't Nehemiah at the time, some other person came out and read the scriptures, the holy words. And you know what their response was? All right, when survivor on? Are we done yet? They didn't do that. They wept. They wept when they heard what the Lord had said. We don't weep well. We weep when we lose someone. But what if we have forgotten a revelation of God's goodness? Do you weep when you re-recognize it? Is your soul triggered with emotion when you catch a phrase, oh, that, that's God's love. Oh my goodness, he is still speaking to me. Oh, he doesn't quit. He is with me. What? Hmm. I hope, I hope we don't lose that. I remember this one Christmas, or, no, Easter hymn. Um, May I never lose the wonder, the wonder of it all. Remember that one? The wonder of the cross. 
<sighs> I wonder if we've lost the wonder and have swapped it out for entertainment or wow factor. It's, it's so easy to do. Psalm 107, verse 1 to 3. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. There it is again. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. For he has gathered the exiles from many lands, from east and west, and from north and south. Are you starting to see the pattern of give thanks? It doesn't say take thanks. It says give. It's in you to give. Yeah, I'm not really a thankful person. Yes, you are. Quit speaking lies. Quit, quit repeating darkness. You are one with the one who made you one with himself. I'm one with the force. The force is one with me. I couldn't help that, sorry. <laughs> this, this is about our oneness. You have been made good. You are a good person. You are a thankful person. You are a generous person, whether you like it or not. Start living out of your, the true you, the one God has created, the spirit oneness. He's made you whole. He's made you good. Psalm 107, 22 says, let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. And some of the songs we sing, I don't think we're too joyful. <laughs> I think it's pretty sad sometimes. Unless there's nobody watching, then people do crazy things and it's fun. Psalm 119. I love this. How I long for my life to bring you glory as I follow each and every one of your holy precepts. Then I'll never be ashamed, for I take strength from all your commandments. I will give my thanks to you from a heart of love and truth. And every time I learn more of your righteous judgments, I will be faithful to all that your word reveals. So don't ever give up on me. Maybe that needs to be a prayer. That actually is a prayer, but maybe it needs to be your prayer. Now, reading this from the Old Covenant, it kind of can mess things up, but the idea of commandments... They had laws in the Old Testament. The New Testament gives us commandments. Commandments are not laws. Laws have consequences. The commandments are for your good. And it's probably wisdom. Don't do this. Do this. Like, some people say, well, we're under grace. We don't need any of those now. Really? Are you, are you totally living from abiding completely, full on, 100%, always, continually, and need no reminders of acting correct the way who you really are? Really? <laughs> I need reminders. But the New Testament doesn't have the heavy-handed law because the law is now placed in our hearts. We live from the life of Christ. Jesus is in us and he wants out. We've said that many times. That's what this is. It's not about the commands. Don't let the word commandments scare you into a guilt-shamed obedience. Obedience is simply responding to the truth that Christ is putting into you or revealing to you. That's it. Be nice to that person. Be kind to that person driving crazy in the roundabout. Um, whatever it takes. And it's, it's really quick. <laughs> okay? This is how we live moment by moment, instant by instant. Just listening to the voice of Christ in us. Jesus went to a quiet place the night before he died. And he was already tired. His disciples were asleep. He went over to them and said, Guys, seriously, can't you just stay up a little bit longer? Where's the coffee? They, just, they, were, they weren't cluing in. They couldn't. They didn't have the capacity to really recognize what was going on. And Jesus went back and prayed. He went to his source of oneness. When you are in your despair or great place of fear, maybe looking at the modeling that Jesus displayed, it's not the to-do list of what we must do. He modeled some healthy patterns. Just because he did a whole bunch of stuff doesn't mean we 
we have to do those things. Well, Jesus did, so we're supposed to. I don't know where that comes from. That's some duty rule list. I can't, rules are great because you don't have to think at all. It requires no faith. But Jesus didn't give us rules to follow. He gave himself. We're called to hear his voice, recognize his voice. And if we could just stop once in a while to smell the roses, <laughs> you might hear the love of God coming out in a scent. You might sense the love of God as you do your art or play your instrument. I, 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 I don't want to embarrass Lori, but this one's really good. Uh, it, it'll be safe, don't worry. But Lori plays the cello. You've heard her play. She practices a lot. But for me, no matter what's going on, a baseball game on TV in my office, whatever it is, suddenly mm, that sound reverberates through the house and it does something weird. I've never told you guys this. There's a sense of calm and peace just from the first note on. And I love that sound. I've told you that, but there's a re focusing that happens. It can come from an external place. It can come from an internal place. But the point is, it brings to the place of being thankful, of calm and peace. I hope you hear that today. Next week, we're going to dive into some of the New Testament encouragements. It's not going to be a big four-week series. I'm only going to do two weeks of this. <laughs> um, but I think it's a big one. And I hope you could hear from just the Old Testament. Wait till New, the New Testament stuff's awesome. Just wait. There's <laughs> some really good stuff. But if this is the pattern that we've seen from the Old Testament, hey, be thankful, be thankful, be thankful. Because you saw the pattern, right? There's a lot. And there's a lot more. I, didn't, I couldn't get into them all. There's way too much. If it's that much, <clears throat> maybe we should take it seriously and ponder. All right. <coughs> a couple of reminders for this week. Online donations, you can e-transfer or uh, click the buttons online. <clears throat> and don't forget to register online for next week. Do it by Saturday, 5 p.m. Uh, you can register now. I think, Jan, can we, where, can, can they pre-register for weeks ahead? You can pre-register for anything ahead. But once it ends, that's it. You can't go back. But you can register ahead of time for the Sundays you know you want to be here. Just a heads up. And then at 11.15, we'll do a Zoom chat with those that want to jump on board. So Get your computers ready and jump onto Zoom. It's going to be a short 10, 15 minute. That's it. And then uh, at least it's a way to connect. And we'll find out how to get it set up here in the gym so we can include those that are here physically and say hi to a couple other Zoom folks. Because that is fun. And I remember when we had a lot of people in there and it was, it was really neat. You know, Alex and Karen in Ottawa and meeting people from all over the place. A guy from Oregon, Mike, and so on. Like it, it's, it is a fun thing to do. All right, with that... That ends our time together. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and thank you for joining us online. We'll see you next week.